What's up, everyone? How you doing? Welcome to another episode of Coffee with Colin. My name is Colin Inglesfield, and tonight I'm not drinking coffee. I'm actually drinking tea. I've had uh, pretty incredible traveling. Uh, t- past two weeks, been traveling. Went to go visit my family in Chicago and been going to these weekend seminars. And at these seminars, I get to meet a lot of really cool people and help them uh, identify and create what their future looks like. We talk about dreams. We talk about goals. We talk about manifesting everything that is important to us and those deeper, uh, higher level places. And tonight, my guest is going to be, uh, my guest and I are going to be talking about what some of those dreams and goals look like and how to support you in fulfilling on all of that. Um, he has a background in business. This is something businesses as I've gone into this whole world of digital marketing over the past, like five, I'd say five years now, ever since I wrote my book. Um, this is a new territory for me. And the title of my book, Agile Artist, uh, really lends itself to our need to be agile in the sense of being able to adapt to all the crazy things that are happening in the world, especially right now with AI and uh, the way that industries are changing so quickly. Um, including Hollywood, you know, with the advent of Netflix and Amazon Prime, as convenient as it is for us to be able to watch movies right from our living room, it has completely changed the way in which our industry um, exists. And even with the strike that happened this last summer, uh, we're trying to figure out how all of this is going to play out when the dust settles. Essentially, what it comes down to is that there's more opportunity for more people out there. So there's, this is a great time if you are an actor or an entertainer and want to get into the business. This is a great time to do it. However, just want to prepare you for a lot more people who are now entering into the industry in, and the arena and the m- amount of money that is allocated or paid to actors and people who are in the industry has just been spread out all over all of these different platforms, including YouTube and uh, Instagram, TikTok, as we, uh, as we just see the proliferation of all these platforms. And so where does that leave us all? You know, we all have our dreams. We have our goals. We want to be able to provide for our families. We want to be able to find purpose in our lives. And in the midst of all of this, because everything seems to be moving so quickly, we can tend to feel lost or uh, feeling like we're just not sure where we fit in. At least that's where I have been feeling in the whole, you know, past few years in, in terms of how the shift of my industry, the entertainment industry has been, and where am I going to fit in? Where do I fit into the place of wanting to tell great stories, wanting to inspire people? And sometimes in life, it requires us to just look at where we are at, be honest with ourselves and have to make some difficult decisions about how, how are we going to make that happen? What changes do we have to make within ourselves and within our lives to fulfill on our dreams and our goals? And this is why, you know, Dreams and goals are amazing, but they can also be very frustrating. They can be very, uh, they can cause us to be burnt out. They can cause us to question ourselves and question our motivation and our ability to do what we want to do. But one thing I've realized is that when you surround yourself with amazing people who are supportive and who have the information that maybe you don't, you're going to learn something. And you, by surrounding yourself with intelligent people, who know what they're doing in the spaces that you want to go to. Much like when I was acting, I I made it a point to seek out actors and producers and directors who are at the places and the levels that I wanted to be at. Otherwise, if you continue to hang out with people who are in like the lower levels of where you want to be, maybe they're, they're, they're your friends and they're great company, but if we really want to level up in life and get to those more inspired places in life, it requires us to get out of our comfort zone and to seek these people out. And in my journey of all of this, I have met some amazing people over the past few weeks, including this fine gentleman that I'm going to be bringing to the screen very shortly. And uh, his name is Matt Gottesman. And this guy, I just met him, um, just been emailing with him over the past few days and got to talk to him today for the first time. And this is what I love about this show is that I get to meet and talk to really cool people who have insight and knowledge to share with us to help us level up in life. And this this guy has been doing it for quite some time. Um, his background is in business. He's an entrepreneur. Um, he has founded two companies. He's got a publishing company, a tech company. Um, he's working on his first book. And he has a podcast, which is called The Niche Is You. The Niche Is You podcast. 
And when he comes up on here um, in a little bit, he's going to tell you all about it. And uh, hopefully you guys will follow him and uh, just soak up what he has to offer because I know what I'm going to be asking him tonight is uh, going to be some questions that I have personally for my business, my digital marketing, my courses, how to promote my books. And as of a lot of you, uh, similar to what a lot of you are doing out there with you wanting to get your voice heard out there in, in the stratosphere of everything that we're doing to find our purpose and to connect with our audiences to truly make the difference that we want to make in our lives. A lot of the times it just requires us to fine tune and get the insight and the knowledge to make all of that happen. Um, so without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to bring to the stage now, Mr. Matt Gottesman. How you doing, Matt? I'm doing well. That was an incredible uh, lead up to this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. Thank you for being here. And uh, you're right in my backyard, right here in Scottsdale. Is that right? I am. I am. So I'm looking forward to meeting up and, you know, and you've got your event coming up. So uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. Yes. And, uh, yeah. No. And, I, and I, I loved your, you know, there were some really great things. I was taking some notes as you were talking. Um, first of all, thank you for the intro. It, it's, it's funny to be introduced from the business side. Um, I can't wait to read your book. Because I, for me, the entrance into the internet, into my, the business world was from the art side. So I always saw the internet as like the artist's dream to express yourself and connect with people and pretty much write your own path. Even though when, you know, you start on the internet, like back in 99, 2000, 2001, they look at you like, what is this internet thing, you know? And yeah. so, so I love, I can't wait to read your book. Uh, I don't want to, we'll just, we'll go from there, but thank you for having me on. Awesome. Well, again, thanks for taking the time yeah. to, to be here. And uh, again, as I mentioned, we've, we, you know, we've just been introduced to each other this week. Um, and so I've got a ton of questions and for everyone out there who has some questions, Matt, I'm not sure if you can see on the right side of your screen, um, people may be typing in some questions here. We've got John Michael here. We've got Tina Holden. What's up, Tina? Lucy, Heather, Zul, uh, Zulma. And uh, everyone else out there, Millie and Elizabeth, if you have any questions for myself or Matt during our conversation, feel free to type it in here and we will get to you. Um, you mentioned that you're going to be speaking at my retreat here in Scottsdale, April 25th through the 29th. Actually, you're going to be speaking on Saturday with Nicole and Katie. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be doing a guest panel. And at the retreat, I've compiled a great group of people. We've got some incredible speakers. And I appreciate you taking the time to uh, to come out and share with you your knowledge and expertise in the business space of entrepreneurship. Um, so as we were just chatting before you jumped on here, um, can you share with us a little bit of your background? And you mentioned you went to Air, uh, University of Arizona, right? Mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit about what your background is and what you're currently doing uh, to support people with uh, fulfilling on everything that they're doing in the business space. Yeah, well, uh, there's a lot of intersection between the business side and then digital creativity, spiritual purpose, if you will, right? Um, and that's mostly because of my own experience, my own journey, which was back in the, the late 90s, early 2000s, I, you know, I started school uh, at the University of Arizona and uh, I became infatuated with the internet uh, long before you know, it became a thing and everybody was like, oh, well, email. No, like, I'm not going to stop sending mail. I'm not going to stop sending these things. Email is a fad, right? And I remember the guidance counselors saying things like, um, what, you know, what do you want to do? You know, you're going to school for international business. And I'm like, well, the internet. And they're like, yeah, well, uh, what does that mean? I'm like, well, yeah. international business, the internet, you know, like cross countries. You know, I, I it seemed obvious to me, but I think it's just because I understood that I was online and you were connecting with people from around the world. And I, I thought, wow, this is going to be really cool. Mm -hmm. And so they were like, you know, we can't really help you. And I said, yeah, I know, you know, I'm going to have to figure this out on my own. And I come from a very entrepreneurial family, a very uh, spiritual, holistic family, very kind of, you know, listen, create your own path and don't be afraid to fall. Don't be afraid to quote unquote fail. I think it's a funny word to me because um, is it failure? Or is it a signal? You can't, you can't escape like what's for you. It's you, you're always, I, I did a podcast episode on like, did you really detour? 
or is that also part of the path, you know? And so, um, so I, I ventured real quickly, uh, I, I wanted to, I thought I wanted to go into the music industry because uh, I wanted to bridge artists from around the world and have them create more of their, uh, their own autonomy within their art using the internet. Mm -hmm. And so I first went out to Virgin Records in LA in Beverly Hills. Uh, as quickly as I got into A&R is as quickly as I got out of the music industry. <laughs> and I- um, Why is that? Why did you get in and get out so quickly? You know, I, I think it was uh, just that I, I realized um, I'm just, I'm not a corporate person. And it's interesting. I thought that the industry, and it did, I thought that the industry was going to change. I was around digital music and I know that they were, you know, listen, old school business paradigms are very, they don't necessarily like change. I mean, they've been a certain way for the last 80 to hundred years. Mm -hmm. I think they were designed that way. We're not going to go on that tangent or anything. Um, and I think that adapting to change and this new internet world was probably scary in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. And so I, I noticed that uh, a lot of things that I either wanted to do or, you know, people, I said, you know, you should take a look at these people. And they said, oh, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. I said, you know what? Okay. Something seems off here. Uh, <laughs> so I'm trying to be very diplomatic. Um, and I, I immediately, <clears throat> excuse me, I immediately thought I would <clears throat> make a tech company or uh, like a, a like a, a platform before myspace was out i thought of doing this idea of music artists on the internet um creating music together and then you know myspace was just coming out and uh, you know uh, i did not know what i was doing <laughs> i did not this is the way i learned business was diving headfirst into something that i passionately believed in and not knowing how, but trying to figure it out. And so I, like you, I, I put myself around a lot of people, uh, a lot of uh, coders, a lot of graphic designers, different people that knew what was happening with the internet at the time. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, can you help me make this vision? And, um, you know, I got, I got into it with uh, uh, a, a friend of mine at the time where, you know, the tech company cost us our friendship, unfortunately. And uh, I learned a lot, a lot of very expensive lessons in that you know i'm in my early 20s and everything that could go wrong did and that taught me very quickly um a lot about business about um spirituality about how do you handle things with grace how do you start from scratch how do you make mistakes how do you make mistakes gracefully uh mm -hmm. you know how do you handle other people how do you handle money um everything you could imagine right so uh fast forward a little bit uh during that time i was learning a lot about the internet i got into real estate and it was only because the real estate was providing me money to uh keep my the the, the startup going and in doing so um eventually the startup was done i'm doing real estate i don't want to be doing real estate the rest of my life even though i i was really good at it and um I eventually decided to go back to get my MBA from Thunderbird uh, Business School. And it's an international business school. And again, like I'm this entrepreneurial kid and everyone's like, what do you want to do? And I'm like, I want to do something with the internet, you know, <laughs> all these. And this is 2010, 2011, 2012. And, you know, a lot of the teachers were like, well, it's the internet. You know, I mean, it's only a part of marketing. It's only a part of business. And I was like, well, you know, so-and-so's government was overthrown last week by the internet. Like, um, I think it's going to change the game, you know? And so fast forward, I was very good at being early to the game. And so I met with, uh, a, uh, through a friend of mine, I met with somebody from Belvedere Vodka, which was part of the Louis Vuitton Moet Hennessy conglomerate. And, uh, you know, I wasn't a, a drinker of vodka or anything, but I, I met the executive vice president in New York City. And he's like, Matt, I don't understand anything about this digital creating communities, social media, you know, you know, this tech world. It sounds sexy, but I have no idea what's going on with it. Yeah, I respect that. And he goes, I don't really have budget for you, but I'm going to refer you to Krug Champagne and Renard Champagne and the champagne brands and like work with them. And then on the side, like if you can connect with me and tell me what I don't know that these agencies, you know, 
are telling me or, you know, are, are trying to, you know, charge me for these contracts. I'm like, sure, why not? Mm -hmm. I end up in New York and partially in France, um, helping these companies uh, around, you know, branding in the digital age and moving everything that they're doing in a physical world online. And how do you communicate that to people worldwide? And how do you do it vulnerably? You mentioned telling stories. You know, how do you be your most authentic self and allow people into your world? And um, it isn't, you know, the Internet is in very real time. I mean, we're doing that now and that's a normal thing now. But, you know, going back 10 years, it, it worried a lot of people like what happens if you make a mistake? And I would always tell them, like, the beauty of a mistake is it shows your humility. It shows your vulnerability. It shows, like, your willingness to, like, to help, you know, the people who, you know, maybe just saw your mistake, right? Yeah. And so I had a really good run. I, I helped them, uh, helped several brands under LVMH, helped the World Trade Center at the time. Um, and then uh, through some radical life changes, I, uh, I got really burnt out from consulting and um, I have been a writer for the past 25 years and 30 years. And then I decided I wanted to start talking online on Instagram in 2014. I wanted to start talking about um, entrepreneurship. Like what do people really go through? Like mental wellness, um, when people doubt you, when they don't understand you, when you're misunderstood. Um, uh, relationships. I was going through divorce at the time, um, and it was an amicable divorce. But I, I, I didn't. I never thought of myself as the divorcing type. Uh, you know, marriage. I thought was just a, a really great thing, and, and I still do. And um, so, with my life changing so much, I wanted to talk about, you know, healthy relationships, uh, mental well-being, creativity, trusting your path, trusting yourself. I'd seen so many things in the business world that weren't adding up now everybody sees them publicly online and i'm not crazy anymore you know but at the time i was like wow there's a lot of people in these roles that you know they strut a lot of power but they don't really know always what they're doing not with lvmh but with other brands and it just um it, it was it was hard so i i needed to write online in a way that could kind of help others and serve the world and to fast forward about uh 2019, my my father, who was like my best friend and, and mentor, he, um, you know, he he loved me writing on the Internet and uh, he is uh, such an amazing man. He uh, he passed in 2019. And in that passing, I remember just thinking, like, you know what, I'm turning 40 soon and I can't I can't keep doing things the way I'm doing them. Something has to change. And uh, so that pushed me even further onto a, this journey of my consultancy had turned into an agency. I was helping all of these brands with like digital marketing and sales funnels and all the stuff that all of you, for the reason we're all here, everybody can see all these things, how these things work behind the scenes. I've been doing so much of it for everybody else. And I finally felt a calling to be like, you know what, I, I want to I wanna do it for me. And I want to, um, I want to, you know, my father was very much uh, just a champion of my work. And, um, you know, he was just like, you know, you got to, you got to go all in kid, you know, always on your stuff. And prior years to that, when I was first going into divorce and transformation and all these things, and I remember, you know, I remember we were sitting in the airport coming home. Uh, we went with my wife, we were coming home, just me and my parents. And I remember sitting in the airport and he was like, which way do you think it's going to go? And I'm like, 50, 50 into divorce, you know? And he was like, I love you. And I'm like, oh man. I was like, now I, I love my father. He's a very loving man, but he was a, a, a Bronx, New York lawyer, businessman. You don't, he's not, you don't normally, the first words aren't like, you know, I love you, but he was like, I love you. And I was like, okay, you know, what's the advice? And he said, you know, um, you take care of everybody but are you taking care of yourself? Mm. And he's like, sooner or later, you're going to have to just go all in on you. You're going to have to bet on yourself and you're going to have to, you know, um, run your race for you. And he's like, I don't think you're out of time in life, but I think you're out of time, like in general, you're, you're just going to have to run your race. And so that carried me into the internet world for myself, writing and creating this massive community online. 
And then in, um, you know, years later when he passed, uh, I went even further all in on my stuff and I started just writing and building a newsletter and my second podcast. And I, I wanted to talk about this idea of the niche is you and um, this, this whole platform of the niche is you is that this world is going to try to box you in mm -hmm. only because they're trying to make sense of themselves through that. Yeah. You can't, you, you, and we often at our times ourselves box ourselves in, we use these labels and we use these titles. Well, I'm this, no, you're more than that. Well, you know, um, or this is where I derive my identity from. Mm -hmm. No, that's a role you play. And I think that that's something that people have to, you know, understand is they have to, you know, really have this inner relationship and trust themselves. You know, I, I, I said this recently, I had a friend of mine who uh, was a CPA, $250,000, $300,000 a year, great job. In his heart, he was a farmer. And in the, in the, the world we live in, this external world, this physical world we live in, people are so quick to be like, no, 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 that's the responsible thing to do. You have, you know, family and this is, you know, and I get it, I totally get responsibilities. Yeah. Um, and we were raised, right, in this world to take this, these are the safe paths. We were not raised to take the path that trusts ourselves. We were raised to take paths that are designed by society to say, this is what success looks like. And I disagree, I, I wholeheartedly disagree. Long story there, short, is that he did become a farmer, makes millions. Difference is over here, it's what he loves to do. It's what, um, you know, was part of his passion. He could, you know, doing the work there is not doing the work over here. And over here, he saw so many other things, so many other needs to fulfill within the community, within, uh, you know, other farms, within, you know, um, within the food industries, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you can trust yourself. You can go in on your art or your passions or your other things and responsibly do the work and make out very well. And I think those are discussions that have to happen more. How do we trust, you know, what our God-given talents and gifts are here to do? And yeah. can we walk with God? So, yeah, that's the long, long, long. No, it's, it's a lot of really great stuff. And first off, sorry to hear about your father. Thank uh, you. He's like, he, yeah, he sounds like he was uh, someone who was there for you to give you some great advice. And uh, I was fortunate to have a great father who uh, taught me a great work ethic and learned a lot from his, from him as well. And my mom was always, um, and still is someone who uh, has always instilled in me the belief that if you dream it and think of it, it's possible. And um, I, I credit her a lot for my willingness to just go out there and pursue these crazy yeah. uh, endeavors. Um, I guess where I have, um, not been as successful and been able to uh, maybe get to where I want to go is it's, it's great to first have a dream. It's great to have an idea of where you want to go, but where I have gotten tangled up is the actual systems and, and uh, strategy in getting to where I want to go and just thinking like, well, if I just have this idea, it'll all work out. And I'm, I'm just, I keep finding myself throwing spaghetti against the wall. Um, and trying to see what's going to work. Or I try like 20 different things, but then I get spread so thin that I'm realizing that I've really got to start focusing and honing in on just a few different things in order to really give those things a shot before moving to something else. Uh, but I guess my question to you is specifically with like this accountant who like he gave up his whole profession as an accountant to, be, to pursue farming. Is that what yeah. this guy did? Mm hmm so a lot of people who I, I talk to and a lot of people out there um, are maybe in jobs or professions where they're doing it. They've gotten uh, they've they've pursued what they thought was the right thing to do, the responsible thing to do. Um, and now they're in a place where they are have made some money and they're ready to maybe now transition into something that is more purposeful and is more in alignment with who they are and what they want to share into the world and create their legacy what advice do you have for someone who is wanting to make that leap, but is just not quite sure or nervous or just not sure enough if that is the smart thing to do, the prudent thing to do? Um, and how do you support someone in that in that decision? Absolutely. Uh, well, first of all, you know, there are some people who 
they just jump and I give them so much credit. I didn't do that. Even, even when I would go from, you know, like when I had my digital agency, uh, uh, a few years back and I, you know, I decided about two years ago, I wanted to just go all in as me as the primary client. I didn't just jump ship right away. I think a, for me, conservatively, a great strategy a lot of times is, well, while you're doing things over here that are, is like your financier or your, you know, financial provider or the thing that has been your responsibility for some time, how do you start making time over here for the calling? For the thing that's calling you for the thing that you know and and here's the deal already it's a mindset shift too because really farming i'm an accountant <laughs> farming really you know and i think what happens is we're going on in our head about what is this is this you know this can't be it are you you know serious what am i going to do for money what am i like we go through all of these emotions internally and so i think it's great to often keep something that has been yours for a while while also starting to make time to at least understand why is that calling there? Whether it's, you know, starting to, um, you know, carve out an hour or two a day researching, uh, maybe actually producing something in that category or that new discipline, uh, maybe taking classes, whatever it might be, almost like a hobby that doesn't have to take off or do anything keep the pressure out of it just to allow yourself the ability to explore this is creative exploration that's all that this all of this is we're here to create you know and and i think that if we can take that pressure off initially and just look into it in discovery mode and actually you know make some moves with it then we see what happens and it's an interesting thing because you start to see this dynamic shift where why is there e you may be doing you may be increasing the workload in something you love over here mm -hmm. that's it's gaining momentum but why does it feel like there's ease what's going on there's something godly happening like there's there seems to be ease even if there's still a lot of work mm -hmm. but over here there starts to feel more and more resistance and you're like i can't figure this out but why does this feel this way and it's like well now you're seeing the contrast between following a calling and doing something that you know might be using your skills and talents which by the way you can use those same skills and talents you know that farmer oh he's got a very well run budgeting farm <laughs> i mean he knows how to run it from an accounting perspective but he also had you know background in landscaping and and um you know just from family and and, and soil and you know all that but yeah. um but so you get the idea that sooner or later you can this may develop enough momentum and be able to provide for you some aspect of, okay, you know what? I think I, 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 you'll know when you need to know, I need to go all in on it. Right. Mm -hmm. But at least it's not done from this pressure. Now there are other people, they love the pressure. They're like, Nope, I'm out. And I get that because I've, I've witnessed some people and I, I myself knew I had a breaking point with like my third or fourth thing. And with that agency, I was like, I'm out, I'm out. You know, um, I think you just you get to a place where the pain of change is more than the pain. Excuse me. The pain of staying the same is more than the pain of change. Mm -hmm. You'll change. <laughs> so, um, you know, hopefully that that helps. But I, I think it's great for people to take the pressure off and at least be in constant discovery and creator mode just so they can actually start to bring in that energy of like what's calling and why is it calling so much and then see where it goes from there. What advice would you give? someone who's looking to start their own business or to venture into writing their own book to go out and promote it yeah. or to start their own, like create their own course uh, and put it up on in the digital space because there's so much money to be made in the digital space. Okay. And uh, not just that this is all about making money, but obviously with the way in which the world is nowadays, we can't you know, really rely on a single job to be mm -hmm retiring vehicle we a lot of us are looking for other avenues these side hustles um, for someone who's not necessarily tech savvy but they're wanting to get into the space where would you tell them to start um first of all thank you i'm so passionate about this topic we are living in the greatest i know the external world let's let's for just a minute i know that there's a lot going on there's a lot of change happening but we are living in one of the greatest times in history where the gatekeepers are gone. You can go online. 
I tell people all the time, I'm like, the moment you start putting your work on, congratulations, you're a writer. Like, oh, no, 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 no. Like, once I get to a New York Times bestseller, I'm like, no, 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 no. Once you start writing and you have an audience, you're a writer. Oh, well, I haven't done this. I haven't done that. I'm like, no, 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 no. The external world told you that when you achieve these things, those things are gone. They still exist because society has been kind of promoting them. But then over here, you're watching the music industry, the film industry, the writing industry and publishing industry, the journalist industry, uh, the clothing industry, art, sculptor, sculptors, uh, painters. Um, I mean, uh, uh, CPAs. Uh, I met a CPA online who quit a CPA firm and he teaches financial literacy to half a million followers and makes like about a million dollars a year now. Oh, um, yeah. And his CPA firm, he was making $80,000 a year, working 100 hours. And he was told, um, you either quit your Instagram because he was teaching people financial literacy and not promoting products that were only approved by them, the gatekeepers, right. which there were the products, the financial products they were going to make money off of. And he, he thought, you know, as a kid, he was in his 20s at the time. He's like, something feels off here. I'm like, oh, integrity is kicking in. And he was just like, no, I'm going to quit you guys. And he went online and he created his courses around financial literacy. You can do it around farming. You can do it around balloon animals. You can do it around anything <laughs> that you want. Right. And but that see, but the, the issue is to a lot of people, that's not possible. They're like, no, that's never been done before. And I'm like, exactly. You're welcome. Have fun. And I think that it's a mindset shift because people we've been programmed otherwise to think that that's not a possibility. And you're watching this wave of people in the creator economy and say, you know what? Here are things that I want to do that I am so passionate about. And, um, you know, one gal, she's like the Excel spreadsheet girl. I think you can look her up on Instagram. 925,000 followers. Yes, and I've she, seen this girl. <laughs> yes. She what loves is- spreadsheets, Excel. I mean, even in the day and age of AI, you know, and she shows how to even use AI on spreadsheets. She loves what she does. And she it's makes still a is. lot of money yeah. with this, with spreadsheets. And yeah. I, and so you've got to appreciate this time that we live in. And so I, I often tell people, it's never perfect, publish it. Just go online, go on the internet. Now, it does take humility. Again, entrepreneurship is very spiritual. Humility, humbleness, um, starting from scratch, um, saying that, you know, hey, I don't know all these things. I'm just going to figure them out in front of you all. And I'm going to talk about these things that I'm discovering. And um, they're things that I'm very passionate about. So in me doing them, I'm going to continue to get your guys' feedback. And hopefully you'll come along for the journey. And like, that's it that the, i tell everybody that the marketing plan is you now mind you you have instagram and TikTok and youtube and uh substack for writing and you've got all these you know podcast platforms yes there's a lot of tech and i i think the most important thing to do is to find creator communities online to use your main um you know some of your main platforms like instagram uh, i'm not i'm not a TikTok person but instagram or you know linkedin TikTok, youtube whatever it might be and throw a genuine interest in figuring out how to accentuate, you know, the the how to use it to talk more about the things that you love right. and less about how to use it to like, oh, I'm always marketing myself. Right. And I and I and I kind of tell people it's like if you are trying to build your personal brand, a lot of times what happens is you'll burn out. So look at it as you're trying to build your personal mission. And um Go online and and start making content. Find out how people are making content around their things that they like. uh, And then say, you know what? I like the way that they do content. And that seems to be doing well. I can see how many likes and how many things are happening from them, you know, from doing it. How are they structuring it? Now I want to apply that same technique, but to farming, to balloon animals, to spreadsheets, (laughs) whatever, whatever it is you want to talk about. Mm-hmm. And and go from there, and then you figure it out. And, and there's so many communities online. Everybody's sharing. It's actually very open. Everybody's like, "Hey, how are you doing this? How are you doing that? I'd love to tell you." Um, and uh, and there's so many ways to learn from other people's courses, you know. But uh, it definitely starts with jumping onto the platform and saying, "Hey, this might work. Here's my phone. Let's have this conversation, and let's try to you know grow this mission." A lot of what I was experiencing when you know, working on these TV shows is you've got the studio heads 
and the executives who are, they have their vision and their idea of what the story should be. And then when we were on set shooting and actually doing the scenes and, and in the trenches of actually of, uh, of, of acting and, uh, blood, sweat, and tears, we would get these comments sometimes coming back saying, well, we want to change this and do this. And it felt like it was just kind of watering down what the art of what we were trying to do. And this is where what I like about the digital um, content that I'm creating is that you get to be the artist and the entrepreneur and you get to be all of it where you're not having to create under the auspices of someone watching over telling you that you've got to do it this way or it's too much this or, you know, it, it, it where that, that um, combative art versus commerce type of relationship. And what's great about what I'm seeing in, in the online space is that the, this is, I think the first time where art and commerce are actually melding together to create this incredible synergy of amazingness. Uh, I guess, just from your reaction, you're you're agreeing with what I'm saying about the opportunity, right? A hundred percent. It's so well said how you put it. That's exactly it. I mean, even it's been even hard recently. Uh, I've been putting so much more art back into content creation for the things that I want to talk about. And so I grew like a hundred thousand recently in the last four months. And it's funny that I mean, when I mean like people have reached out, hey, I see you used to have an agency. I'll pay you. And I'm I'm talking they. They put some, they put some stacks in there. They're like, I'll pay you this, you know? And I, and I was like, no, not this time. No, because I also detoured a lot and they're like, wow, you really know what you're building now. I'm like, I have a vision and I'm gonna let, you know, that come together more and more over time. But yes, I'm very directional. And the reason why I love what you said is because the hardest part about consulting, even now, like even in your seeing, I'm watching a lot of people in the creative services industry the you know naval ravikant talks a lot about this he's the co-founder of angelist.co uh he's invested in over like 300 companies he's from silicon valley but like uh but he's not a silicon valley guy he's not a business guy he's not a guru he's they call him the angel philosopher and it's this idea of you have to throw yourself into the work you have to treat it like your art and the the issue sometimes with consulting with other people is like i can tell them what to do but if they're not attached to the mission and the art of why they're doing it, they are not going to do it. And if I do it for them, it's not their soul. They're extracting the art from my soul and interpretation and growing their business. And I tell everybody, I'm like, you can't escape the work. You're going to have to do the work and art. And you want that art. And as you put in that commerce where you want to give your interpretation with your soul with your vulnerability, with like how you want to do it. And guess what? There's no constraints other than, you know, your own mental ones and the, you figuring out the, the market and, and growing. And um, because previously, yeah, there've been a lot of people where they say, um, here's what we want from you, but not like that. And don't, like you said, and they'll water it down. Yeah. Um, there's a, a kid online, I get, I'm calling him a kid. He's I think 32, 31, 32, uh, Connor Price. He's a, he was a childhood actor. And um, when 2020 hit, uh, he he still loved videography, but he decided to go all in on the internet to create videos because he loved videography uh, and he loved music. And what's cool about this, and I don't know the fullness of the of the story, but um, when you don't have someone telling you how to do it, and now you get to do your own interpretation. He started making videos, music videos and, you know, and rapping, you know, he's like this, like, you know, just this, this, this chill kid um, who is a writer and an actor and his wife recognized, hey, you're really good at videography and uh, music and instrumentation and production and doing all these things. I'm going to help you with the marketing. And he's now hovering around 2.4 million. He's an independent musician. He does more streams than mainstream music. Of course, they're also a system using a machine. Um, he has his own merch line, his own tour dates, his own, like he makes, he, he learned how to make videos in new formats uh, with his own artistic expression. Mm -hmm. uh, not the wild stuff where people are going off the 
deep end. I'm not like he's he's just a good kid. Like you know, um, he recently just teamed up and did like a gospel uh, rap song with another kid who's known for doing gospel rap. The internet is being taken over by the artists who are owning their own path, and then they are monetizing it in accordance with what feels right for their soul, and no one can tell them otherwise. And I think that that's a beautiful marriage between you know you can earn from your talents and gifts. Uh, you just have to be responsible in actually doing them, right? You know, so that's that's a different path than when we're told. Sometimes it's easy with excuses when we've been told by the company, like, oh, you can't do that. Like, oh, well, I can't do that. Well, suddenly when you have the infinite choice to do whatever you want, um, that sometimes is also overwhelming, I think, for a lot of people. And it stops them in their tracks because it's like, where do I begin? I'm like, yeah. Begin. And because there's so many platforms out there. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about if someone is looking to start their their business, I think it's for everything that I am learning about the digital digital space is you got to know your market. You got to know where your customers are. And so because there's Facebook, TikTok, LinkedIn, Snapchat, uh, YouTube, if someone was uh, about to start putting their content out there and uh, wanting to pick, um, I was told that you should pick to start, pick two and focus just on two to start with. Um, is that something you would advise or would you try to try to do them all and just take the same content and put it out there? And could you tell us nowadays, what are the different demographics of these different platforms so that someone's not trying to promote their accounting course on Snapchat where that audience may not be there, where it possibly could be with TikTok? Yeah. You know, um, OK, well, from a platform number. It varies per person, but I, I think you're good with anywhere between two, maybe three tops. Two platforms where you can really allow yourself um, the time, energy, and attention to grow one and then drive the traffic from that to the others when you want to grow those other ones later. Um, there is really unique software out there that does allow you. This is one of the, I actually have a, a creative course that where I teach my students this, which is like there is software where um, if you use, if you systematically approach your content and you say, you know what, I'm going to do a newsletter and newsletters, Substack, Beehive, those seem to be like the top two, ConvertKit, those are, those are really good platforms. If I do a long form content, I can break out the content, put it in the software and it goes out to Twitter and LinkedIn and Facebook, you know, the same all across three platforms, but that's one piece of content just became three. Right. So there is smart ways to do it. But I say in starting, pick two or three platforms just to get a footing on, you know, how it is. Now, the way I look at it is this. TikTok is for entertainment. Instagram is for like brand portfolio. Like what is it you're creating? What is it you have? What are you doing? LinkedIn is for business. Um, Twitter is for like uh, information um, gathering, information giving. Uh, Facebook still feels just kind of more social to me, although I know it's having its rise again um, because Facebook's like, hey, we'll open up the algorithms to, you know, um, you know, we need more attention again. <laughs> uh, but Facebook still feels a little bit like more uh, social and personable. And so I think if you look at those platforms like that, um, it gives you an idea of you can have a core central business. Let's say you're an accountant uh, and you, you genuinely love being an accountant. And you're talking about numbers. And I, I actually I know of a lawyer who does this. Um, so, um, on Instagram, you know, she'll have really great, uh, lives and stories around, you know, tips to help you, you know, get unstuck in legal. Right. But then on, um, uh, on LinkedIn, she can go a little bit further deep dive and actually like change the convo just enough. Say like, Hey, you know, three things that, you know, your company may not be telling you when it comes to this with your business. Right. Uh, um, and then over on TikTok's like entertainment. I'm not, I think I have like six posts on TikTok. I don't, I don't, I, I as quickly as I got on is as quickly as I got off. It is what it is. I, I, I see its benefits. I'm just. Do you feel that TikTok is mainly a younger audience? Um, it, it was, it still is there. Um, you have to train that algorithm. I mean, they, you can get very distracted over there. Um, so I, you know, but I, I definitely, I think it's a younger audience, but I mean, you are wat watching, you know, you know how it usually works first it starts young and then you start to skew up over time. Mm -hmm. um, I think they're trying to figure out what to do over there. It definitely for commerce, it does very well. Um, you yeah. know, they're very open to, you know, promoting people's videos and content, 
much further than most other platforms. And that's why people go there. Um, you know, and then there's, you got the other things going on there, whether it's, uh, the politics, the, you know, the, I intuitively something hasn't felt right for me over there, which is why I haven't been there. So I, that's kind of, I have to go off of intuition, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah. And so I, I think that that's how I look at like the different platforms, entertainment for TikTok, you know, brand, your brand, the brand of you, the, the mission of you on Instagram, um, you know, the business of you on LinkedIn, the information of you or the information you're giving on Twitter and like the personal side of you on, on Facebook. Right. And I think, you know, and then you can go long form with like a Substack newsletter or a Beehive newsletter platform and actually go deeper on the topics that you want to talk about. And the key is with social, I tell everybody, the goal is you want a deep platform. Oh, I'm sorry. And YouTube, YouTube's like, you know, your the, the, the video version of all the things that you want to talk about because you can actually create like multiple channels, right? Um, but no matter what you do, you, you don't want to just create content for the sake of creating content. You want to deepen the relationship always. And so the goal is you want to de-platform. It's a, it's a term, de-platform them means have somewhere that you can send them where you can deepen the relationship to get their email, their, their name and email, their phone number. So you can have like, you know, further community. You can build community at a deeper level, right? And um, I do that with a text list. So my community gets a text every Tuesday and Thursday morning. Um, you know, I have my podcast and I have a newsletter. What and do you so, use for texting? I use community.com. Community.com community. is, is what, like, you know, a lot of the, the like celebrities and uh, other celebrities, <laughs> which is yourself, uh, with all the celebrities and, um, and uh you know, musicians and journal, like a lot of, a lot of people were using, I think Gary V once invested in there at some point too. And um, yeah, I, I love using the platform. It's very easy and, uh, and quasi affordable. What's the, <laughs> what's the cost to blast out text messages? So, um, you know, it, it changes, they changed since the beginning because obviously there was a lot more um, cost starting to become involved with the texting company. I don't think that they, or with like, you know, the Verizons of the world and whatnot, yeah. um, but like a base for, for having that is like $109, just the base of having the account. And then let's say I've got about 700 and some people on that list. I send out two texts a week. My monthly bill comes out to about two, $290, $300. Okay. Now, it would be easy. I've had some people, you know, in the marketing world say, like, oh, that's very expensive. And I'm like, is it? I was like, I have a 98% open rate. I was able to take my podcast to the top half a percent globally in one year um, with just a small text list. And um, they listen to my podcast every single day that it comes out. Um, and I was able to get, you know, well into the hundreds of thousands of, of downloads um, right away. So the return is massive. And then people go, yeah, but you know, are you making any money from the podcast? I'm like, well, I, I I'm choosing not to uh, at this moment. I'm a, I I could actually for the amount of downloads I'm now getting, um, but I like for example, I'm launching an apparel line. I'm not a fashion designer, but I'm a designer. I'm not a you know a commerce guy. I'm a commerce guy. And this I I want to prove. I show I'm showing my my community like, hey. So I showed them how I design all my pieces. I brought my writing to um my work and um i no, essentially <laughs> i like it i essentially and i i as videos were going on my own sponsor so as my videos started going viral and i'm wearing my own stuff people are like where do i get the hat where do i get the sweatshirt where do i get the you know yeah. the the polos and i'm like you know what i'm making the site and so um when you think about it like that let's say uh so i'm launching this week um you know this is the power of when you build community, it's like, hey, guys, and I, I've been letting them know, like, hey, it's coming out this week. Like, you know, I would love for you to, to check that out. Well, could you imagine if like a thousand people right then and there were like, oh, my God, I love the hat. I'm going to buy it. I'll let you guys do the numbers on that. But like, you know, and I think that that's the power of community. And I, what happens often at times is you get a lot of people stuck on, um, oh, I have to have hundreds of thousands or millions of followers. No, you do not. You have to have a core group of community that like you have where you know they love you man they love you they, they love that you show up they love that you're pouring your heart out they love that you're connecting with other people they love that you're you know purposeful and that you're you're wanting other people to like feel good i mean like man you're of service you're a man of god like you're a man of service and so um you know that like your audience loves you and 
don't hesitate to be like, hey, I made something. You say that. I, I appreciate you. <laughs> but it's true, man. But you are like, and so, and, and but I, I know that it's, it's sometimes hard for us to like, we get so in the, the work of it all. Yeah. When we have those communities and we say, hey, guys, like, hey, I've just launched this or I've just launched that. And, you know, I'd love your support. And, or I did this for you. I made this for you. What do you guys think? You know, that's how anything you could, you know, you can grow anything online, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, quick question, two quick yeah. questions. Uh, one from, looks like Trisha is asking, what about threads? Is Instagram threads, I mean, is anyone using it? Is it a thing? Is it? You know, um, I so I use I use threads. I was using it a little bit more. I, I'm now minimal, like maybe a few times a week, um, just because, you know, it's early, it's open, it is a distribution point. So because it's early, because it's open and it's a distribution point, you know, feel free to be on there, even if it's just a little bit, nothing that overwhelms you. Like because, what do you post on threads? So a lot of what I would normally post on like Twitter. Twitter. Yeah, yeah. Don't, and, and here's a, here's another great tip for, for all of us. Um, when it comes to like your content, um, it's, listen, we're all artists. When you post a piece of content, you're going to have to post it again and again and again and again and again and again. And here's why. Because the first time you post it, not everybody saw it who was already following you. Later on when you post it, the original people who were following you may not have seen it now see it. New people that you've actually now had come into your community now see it. And just new people in general that may not even be following you now have access to it. And I heard an artist online talk about He's like, the problem with a lot of people is you put up your work and you don't keep promoting it. And he was talking about how he kept promoting an album for the last 18 months straight, you know, made like, I think half a million on that album or something like that, or a million, you know, because he was an independent artist. And he's like, the problem with, and he was, you know, he was kind, but he was like, the problem with a lot of you guys is you, you put up your art and you should be so proud of it and you should keep promoting it. And, um, you know, don't think that everybody saw it and don't think that if people didn't like it, um, don't assume that they saw it and just were like, I'm not going to like it. They may not have seen it. It's very possible time of day. They were busy. They didn't know about it. The algorithm didn't show it to them, whatever. And so you don't have to keep coming up with new. A lot of times you can take what you've already created and you can repurpose it, as they say, right? Re you can You can post it the same way it was already before, or you can go deeper on that same material and talk even deeper about it and your audience will love it. And, you know, it takes a little bit of the pressure off of like constantly trying to come up with new stuff. So repurposing your content through threads, through Twitter, through, you know, LinkedIn, I do it all the time. How often should be should we be posting on these social channels? Because sometimes I feel like I you just don't have time in the day to do it. Uh, but a big part of anything is marketing and exposure and all that but it can just get overwhelming when it's like all these different platforms. What advice would you give to someone who's wanting to uh, start putting their content out there and how often each day should they be posting? So I'm going to give a hybrid answer because you get, so, you've probably seen this online. You get so many people who say like, you should post every single day, every single day, every single day. Then you get people say, no, 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 it's quality over, you know, uh, quantity and, and everybody's right. And here's what I've, here's what I've come to learn. Um, I last fall was like, you know what? I've built a lot of systems. I, the last of my clients were pretty much gone. It's time to really go back to content creation. The first thing I did is I started watching creators, not marketing gurus, creators. It's very different. Mm -hmm. Creators, um, are they're They're creating unique ways of making content that the algorithm is adapting to them because people are liking the way they're creating content. And so what I found is if you're newer, or if you're wanting to get kind of an initial boost, I say do 30 days, one a day, every morning or every evening, whatever is that, whatever is your, your jam. Um, here's a, in the beginning why I say 30 days. And then afterwards, you can figure out from there your, uh, your cadence. Is it going to be, you know, every other day? Is it going to be four to five times a week? You can figure it out from there. Several things are going to happen when you do it this way. First, when you put the creative constraint of 30 straight days, what's happening is, is you're forcing yourself to actually figure something out 
and find out what works and what doesn't work. You're experimenting. So doing one a day is a great way to like, it's almost like journaling each day. Look at it as like a journal entry to the world, <laughs> basically. Um, it gets you, you know, into your vulnerability. It allows you to express yourself. It allows you out of that, like, you know, overthinking because you're like, no, I got to get one out today, right? It's a good creative constraint. Now, the other thing is, is that um, something usually pops off. And when it does, even if it's just a little bit of a, of, a, of a bigger than everything else, it tells you something. Oh, I think people want me to go deeper on this. Or maybe I, I made that piece of content really well. Okay. You know, maybe there's something there, right? And then the other thing, we have a creator community online. And I was telling them, I'm like, what do we all love about people who are like reliable? And, you know, they, and they're all like kind of thinking about it. And I'm like, consistency, right? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, don't you love it when somebody in real life is like, they're consistent with their words, they're consistent with their actions. They're just a, they're, they're honest, they're reliable. And they're like, yeah, I'm like that is posting every single day. And they're like, okay, explain. I said, if I'm consistent with my work and you know that you're getting value out of it every single day, basically it's your morning coffee. Oh, uh, let me open up this while I have my coffee and I'm reading something because Matt is providing something of value. He's of service to us as a community. I'm like, they consistently know where to go every single day. That reliability, my consistency becomes their consistency my habits become their habits because I'm doing something consistently. They then show up and I'm part of their day. And I realized this when I was doing my podcast, I do it on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday morning. One Thursday I missed and um, this woman was like, hey, is everything okay? <laughs> and I was like, well, yeah. Uh, I was like, there's a, there a technical error and I'm, I'm trying to fix it, what, but why? And she goes, well, you're part of my morning run and um, I listened to your podcast you know, while I do my morning run, except for Wednesdays, of course. And I'm like, oh my God, I was like, I get it. My consistency is part of now their routines. Mm -hmm. And especially if you're providing value mm -hmm. and that's building community, that's being of service. Now, obviously you don't want to burn out. And I, and I say that that's why you, you adjust. I think there are, there are times for sprints within the marathon. And then there are times to wane off a little bit and say, you know what, God, like, and they get it. They know, you know, they're like, Hey, like, you know, instead of me doing uh, one every day on Instagram, it's now like maybe like four, four days a week, right? Four or five days a week. But that's okay because I jump started the algorithm from creating and, um, you know, I, I've gotten really great, uh, you know, audience now that's just constantly supporting that. So awesome. And yeah. what about anyone who's written a book? What would you say is a great uh, way to promote it online? Uh, do you know, do you have, is that something that you help people with? Oh yeah. And, and I'm, and I'm going to be doing like, for example, um, okay. So let's say you have a concept that's in your book and you write a carousel post and, um, you know, you, you want to make content and a carousel post, you have to make it sort of bite size so people can, you know, digest it without getting overwhelmed. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so, but let's say you have a theme and you you know you swipe through well then on the last page you know that could actually be a page from your book that actually talks further about it right yeah. i did a post the other day where um i was talking about um how we sometimes um think uh too little of ourselves not really too little of ourselves but like we sometimes it's hard to see the bigger vision and mm -hmm. so i was talking about that and the last post was the hat like this it was just a picture of the hat um, one, it is in the book that I'm writing, but two, it's on the apparel launch that I'm dropping. So I said, the last one's for you. It's a reminder for you. Right. And so, and then in the comments, I said, just reply hat and I'll make sure you're on the, the launch wait list. And I had 85 people like comment hat, you know? And so my, my many chat, many chat.com, um, is an automation that sent them um, you know, Hey, uh, it's Matt. Yes. It's me who wrote this. You're on the lit, the wait list. I'll let you know when it launches. Yeah. And we many chat as well. Thank yeah. you. Cheyenne, by the way, Cheyenne is my, uh, my, my tech expertise, my angel in that regard. So <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. So, yeah. So, I, and, and now here's the deal. Keep promoting the book. 
keep, um, you know, some of you guys may have seen Case Kenny on uh, on on Instagram. Um, you know, he's almost at a million now. Um, we were business partners that started our first podcast together, uh, and we split in 2019. Really great guy. Um, you know, he wanted to, he just wanted to be he just wanted to write books and do journals and and have his own personal brand. And I and I totally get that. And um, you know, he's very gifted at writing carousel posts. And the last post will always be a page from his book. And he'll always say, the last one's for you, the last one's for you, or something along those lines, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and he he he's very good at constantly promoting his book. And you have to be very, you, you know, it's like you can tie the two together, right? Our products are the things that we create, our products, our courses, our books, our journals, whatever, our mugs, whatever, you know, they're an extension of our creative work. And I think that if if you're writing about a topic, well, you can write it in a way that it also reminds them, by the way, I go a little bit further in the, on the book. And that's why you put a little snapshot of the book on the end, you know? Um, and I admire, there's a lot of writers I've connected with online that do this. They, they like put snapshots of the book somewhere in the middle of their carousel post, like in my book, you know? And it's awesome. Cool, good, we should do that, you know? Yeah, well, I've got uh, my, my book that I wrote a few years ago, I'm, I've come out with the, uh, the follow-up to it, which is the Agile Artist 90-Day Playbook, which I'm going to be launching here in the next uh, few weeks. Uh, so I definitely am going to want to talk to you about that. And anyone else out there who is interested in talking to Matt about working with him to have him support you with whatever it is you are doing in the, in the entrepreneurial space, Matt, how can people get a hold of you? Um. They can go to at Matt Gottesman on uh, on Instagram. That that'll get you like the, the link will take you everywhere. Or mattgottesman.com, mattgottesman.substack.com. Um, those are probably the best. Or the niches you on Apple, Spotify, and then like a gazillion other platforms. So yeah, that's. But Matt at Matt Gottesman, you'll find everything. You can just go right in the link, and it'll go everything in there. And and I'm happy to to share all this with with everybody. So um, awesome. yeah. And yeah. the name of your podcast again is The Niche Is You. Mm-hmm. The Niche Is You. Some like to say niche. I totally get it. If you want to make it fancy, please do. I, I, I like niche. Niche is an appropriate way to say it too. You know, The Niche Is yeah. You. Um, yeah, no, absolutely. And, you know, and thank you for having me on. And I'm happy to, to geek out on these things. You know, I, I think that we're living in such this amazing time where, you know, we're not, I, I tell people like, we're not making content, we're making art. And it's your work, you know, like, you're the agile market. I mean, uh, Mark, uh, the agile artist. Like you would have a field day online. <laughs> like I mean, you should. I, I hope. I want to see you now. I want to see you now. I'm gonna. I'm gonna put you to a challenge where I want to see you like talk about what that means. Like, you're you're living in a time where everybody's trying to understand what that is. Mm-hmm. So like you're right in the utopia of making you know content. And um, and being able to promote the book that way, so I'm just putting you up to the challenge because, like, all right, you're you're perfectly you're perfectly timed. Yeah, we'll we'll have to talk about this uh, more in depth, and we we'll, we will be talking more about this at the retreat in uh, coming up in about just under two weeks now. Uh, so we've still got a few spots available left for the retreat. So anyone is who's interested in coming down to Scottsdale, getting some sun. It was about what, 90 degrees here today in Scottsdale. So it is definitely the uh, starting to become the high season of sun. And this retreat is going to be uh, incredible for all supportive purposes of uh, supporting you in mind, body, and spirit. We're going to be doing yoga, sun bowl healing. We've got uh, some empowered, inspiring talks. Uh, we've got some incredible food. And it's going to be an all-around great weekend and we uh, we need some more guys to come to this thing. We've got some amazing women coming to the coming to this, and it's interesting. I think, wouldn't you say, Matt, that more women uh, I find are more inquisitive and they're they're more they're more courageous at seeking out opportunities and avenues to try to grow and expand. And I think some sometimes. Um, Men out there, we uh, and I and I admit this too. Like you know, I, sometimes I, I find myself not willing to ask for help as much as I know I need it. And so, all you guys out there who are in a space, just want to let you know that it, there is courage and there is strength in asking for help. And so, 
by reaching out to uh, to Matt with whatever it is you're doing with uh, regards to your entrepreneurship. Uh, you can't go wrong when you surround yourself with people who are successful in the space that you're looking to to move into. So, no, I I love that. I'm I'm glad you brought that up. You know, um, I learned from some very strong, smart, intuitive women. Women are um, so wise. Like they they have this the sixth sense. Their intuition is this this wise knowing. When they especially and I I, I like to see women stay tapped into that because mm -hmm. you know, the world is sometimes pulling them out of out of that and um women are so unbelievably tapped in and um i've like i've learned too that like that intuition you don't like it doesn't have to be logical in fact if anything like oh wait a minute you know you actually have to feel into it and go like there's something like going on and you have to feel into that intuition you know and then um humility is a superpower if you don't know something act like me the way the way i found my entrepreneurial journey much easier and you could use this in art you can use this in any in in character development personal development hey i don't know how to do this but you do can you tell me what you did so i can go do it too mm -hmm. that's it that's not weak <laughs> that uh, and with the lack it's of better balls. terms it's it takes a lot of balls actually to be like you know hey um i by the way, I'd like to be responsible for my life and I'm willing to, to do the work. That's courageous. So yeah. I think humility is a superpower and the ability to say, like, I don't know something. I want to learn it so I can go do it and show up and be consistent doing it. And that's where I think, you know, men and women help each other so much in that, you know, understanding that. So, yeah. yeah. Awesome, man. Well, we are at the uh, end of the show. I want to ask you your your six favorite movie related questions here, because I always like to hear what my guests preferences and interests are in the space of entertainment and movies. So the first question, my friend, is what is your favorite movie of all time? Uh, I, you know, when I, when you first asked about those two and I, I was, I was thinking that I was supposed to answer them right away. So luckily I already, I already made my answers for full transparency with the crowd. And there was a few in there because like, I love the Thomas Crown Affair, uh, both uh, with Steve McQueen and with uh, Pierce Brosnan. I saw the first one with Pierce Brosnan. Uh, I mean, I saw it the first time with Pierce Brosnan, Godfather, all the Godfather movies, a Shawshank Redemption, Casino, Goodfellas, The Italian Job. We just got to pick good. one, man. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know, so all right. Godfather. 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 Yeah. Okay. And what is it about The Godfather that that you love and that resonates with you? You know, it was it was because it's not just like the writing, but it's like how he would think through problem solving right and you're talking about like you know in multiple different uh times of like you know history whatever but it was like this idea i mean obviously it's <laughs> you know it's <laughs> it's a gangster movie but it's but it's just more so about like like the the evolution of a, of a person and how he's trying to like constantly like work through this life that he didn't necessarily ask for you know but yeah. at the same time was kind of put into it. And then at the same time, eventually trying to get out of it. And he's trying to navigate all of these people on the way. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's, it, it's unique to life where we're always kind of navigating the world at large and ourselves and our personal growth and what we're learning from the external world without, you know, taking things so personal, even though it's very easy to take everything personal. <laughs> so yeah. no, I love yeah. that description. And what would you say is your favorite movie from when you were growing up as a kid? The Goonies. <laughs> it was one of them yeah there's a lot but the goonies was was one of them and over what the top like about the goonies uh you know it was just it was it was such a good like they were they were risk takers they were kids and they were like um you know we're gonna save our family we're gonna like go after something that everybody says it looking it's funny that you're making me say it out loud now i never thought about it until right now but it's like you know hey this thing exists Oh, you guys are just a bunch of crazy kids. No, it doesn't. And what do they do? They go and do it and they find out, no, it really does exist, you know? And, and at the same time, they're also doing it for a noble mission, which yeah. is to, you know, save their, their parents' financial troubles. And I think that's really cool. And it's a cool adventure, right? And it's like all our favorite actors, some of them today, yeah. you know, back then, right? So. Yeah. Remember Mr. Copperpot? Yeah. <laughs> Chester Copperpot. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> Uh, what is your favorite comedy? You know, uh, there's so many. Uh, so, uh, but I, I was going back and forth between Austin Powers and Dumb and Dumber. Um, again, it's just, it's just the writing. Mike Myers is such a gifted writer. 
Yeah. Um, and the ability to play multiple parts and to spoof, like I'm a huge James Bond fan. Like I've seen every single James Bond. Uh, I have the whole collection. So, um, you know, but to how, how Mike Myers was able to like spoof that uh, really intelligently and really comically <laughs> and with a lot of fun, you can see like he's having a lot of fun doing it too. So, yeah. yeah. What's your favorite romantic comedy? This uh, this was hard. This was hard because there's there's a few. Um, but I know I'm only supposed to pick one, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go old school. Well, old school for me, '80s. Can't buy me love. I think that was '80s, right? '86, '87, something like that. Um, I, I love Can't Buy Me Love because uh, I think it's like your kind of classic, like don't judge a book by its cover. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, a match can happen anywhere. Yeah. And if you remove labels and you remove, you know uh groups and who should be with what and you know, with who and you you just like a match can come from anywhere and I, and I love that you know was that patrick dempsey patrick dempsey yeah yeah mm -hmm. yep yeah, he was great in that uh and then it was like he disappeared forever and then all of a sudden he's like this heartthrob hunky right. on right. Grey's anatomy it's like right. well i mean yeah look at look at goonies right what was uh data from goonies right who then just won the oscar last year right after like it was like 40 some years right yeah. Yeah. Right? I mean, yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Just, yeah. It's amazing how when you just stick with something that you love and you're passionate about, man, anything can happen. Right. Uh, who's your favorite actor or male character in a movie? I mean, oh, that was so hard. You know, I was, uh, I was going back and forth between Robert De Niro, Al Pacino and Sean Connery. Uh, I mean, I think those are great. Those are great choices. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm a huge Al Pacino fan. So I have to say that. And then, you know, but if you're talking movies, I loved um, Jim Cavazil in The Count of Monte Cristo. I know that that's random because people would think like Passion of the Christ and some others, but like, yeah, yeah. I love The Count of Monte Cristo is such a classic story. Obviously, like the book is exceptional, but I love the ninth or was it the 2001 version of The Count of Monte Cristo? I just, I love that story. And Jim Cavazil played like a really great, like this naive, you know, um, uh, you know, soon to be captain who gets betrayed by everybody only to have to like teach himself, you know, how to have personal development from a priest who then eventually, you know, um, uh, comes back and, and takes, takes the world by storm. <laughs> so it's such a good, like, it's such a good, but it's such a strategic, you know, movie as well too. So that's why I love having these conversations. Cause there's always movies that I've always like, I'm like, that's right. I've always wanted to watch that movie and I keep, Forgetting to uh, to ever play it, so it's on my list. Thank well, you for that. And then if and maybe you have already seen this, but Pierce Brosnan in the Thomas Crown Affair, I mean, the epitome of smart, like how you handle yeah. everybody. Nobody, like you, don't take anything personal. You're very calm. You're very collected. You're mm -hmm. always thinking ahead, but you're living in the present. You know, you have a plan for everything, but you're living like by the moment. I mean, just his that character is very well written and Pierce Brosnan plays it like perfectly. It's one of my favorite movies. Yeah. I saw it when it first came out. I'm going to have to watch it again. Yeah. 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 That's, yeah. Definitely. If, because that means it's been, a, you know, about 20 years. Watch it again. Yeah. Just what? Like. I'm scared. Yeah. Right. Um, and lastly, who's your favorite actress or female character? Um, so uh, that's, that's, that's tough too. There's, there's so many great actresses, but I was going back with between um, Kate Winslet uh, and, um, you know, Angelina Jolie. I know some might not actually put Angelina Jolie in there, um, but she is very adaptable to roles. Like, I mean, she's done like every type of role you could possibly imagine. Um, and uh, and I love that. And then, but Kate Winslet is just like one of those timeless actresses. Like, I feel like she's just, you know, um, you you feel her presence. Like she's got a, 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 such a, a graceful, soulful presence in every role, so. Yeah. Yeah. Great answers, man. Great <laughs> answers. And thank you again for being here. Thanks for your time. And uh, looking forward to meeting you in person in a couple of weeks. And again, everyone out there, there's still time left. If you want to come to the retreat. Uh, lastly, before I leave uh, or let you go, Matt, I like to ask my guests my final question. And that is because Inspire is the brand in which I, I'm doing my retreat. It's my course. Uh, I love to, uh, to inspire people to fulfill on everything that matters most to them. So my question to you is what inspires you? 
creating. And what I mean by that is um, it takes you out of your head and immediately puts you into a place of receiving. When you create, you receive answers. You connect with yourself, you connect with your soul, you connect with God, you, you provide value to the world, right? And so it inspires me to create, even, you know, <clears throat> even if I don't know what it's gonna fully turn into, just start creating and allow like life to be born because of it. And, um, and you'd be surprised at how much you actually end up finding yourself more simply from doing the act of creating versus like debating about where you should start or when you should start. So, yeah. yeah. Awesome answer. Yeah. So great to meet you. Great Have to meet you as well. Great rest of your night. And then again, anyone out there who's interested in connecting with Matt, feel free to reach out to him and, uh, I will see you soon, my friend. Thank you guys. All right. Take care, Matt. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you, uh, you coming out and your contribution, your questions. And if you've had a question that wasn't answered, then come to the retreat. Matt's going to be there Saturday and you're going to get to meet him in person as well as some other incredible speakers. And, uh, we have someone who's going to be coming who, uh, She's helped us uh, actually, help, she actually helped me and Matt connect. Her name is Nicole and she is a publicist. And so if you are looking for advice and insight on how to promote and put out there into the world, what you are creating, as Matt talked about, uh, this is again, your opportunity to meet some incredible, incredible people who are going to support you and uh, help you elevate and move on that trajectory of where you want to go. Uh, over the past few years, I've just been in incredibly blessed with just meeting so many incredible people. And there's so many things out there that we don't even know exist. There's so many different platforms. There's ways to do things a lot easier and faster and uh, with less time and, and effort. And I liked what Matt talked about in terms of really leaning into and being aware of the things in our life that are giving us resistance and the things that are supporting us with ease. And I think that's something that I think we don't necessarily always uh, think about or put in the forefront of why we do the things that we do or when we are about to make a decision. I think it's that's a really good piece of advice. And just think about what are the things that are fulfilling or supporting us with ease. And I liked what he said about are you taking care of yourself and what his dad mentioned to him about, uh, you know, burnout and you can only show up so much for so many other people until you got to start doing things for yourself. And that's what I love to support people in showing up for, the, for themselves. And a lot of the times that's not easy because that's not something that we were grown up and uh, instilled with us in that doing things for ourselves is considered selfish in a bad way, but it's really, important and it's now time for us to start thinking about doing things for us in a selfish way that is also in service of other people and honoring ourselves and this is uh, exactly what all of this is all about this is why i'm creating this community and uh just to help us really step into the empowered versions of ourselves and create these empowered paradigms for us to fulfill and what we want to fulfill on and then i liked what matt talked about in terms of building your personal mission and just throwing yourself into your work and being consistent. So again, thanks for being here tonight. I hope you guys got a lot of uh, value out of this. I know I did. And uh, be sure to uh, to listen to Matt's podcast. Um, and I'm going to put it on here one last time so you guys have it. And it is the niche or the niche is you. So be sure to, to check that out. And I will see you guys all next time. And you guys can go to... Uh, my Instagram uh, bio to also click on the link. We've got our website up now for the retreat. So it's a beautiful website. Thank you, Cheyenne, again, for creating that, putting that all together. And uh, you can go check the website out now and see how many spots are available. And I will see you guys all in less than two weeks. All right. Take care for now and have a great night.